Samantha, thank you so much for doing this. Great to be here. Yeah. So it's not every day I'm sitting at the Trident working on my laptop and I see uh, Samantha Power walk in. Um, well, I'm sure uh, there are other other people who come in who are a lot yeah. more interesting than I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is definitely a, a fun place. But um, so you have a new book, Education of an Idealist. Is that it? It is. Good. The way you were looking at me, I was <laughs> concerned I was getting it wrong. Um, and it's. Uh, honestly is really timely for our world and for on right where I am at with climate change with you know me too in the news there's so many problems there's so much potential I'm honestly agonized every day mm -hmm. about how do we possibly affect positive change in a world that is sickened by partisanship mm -hmm. and so it's really timely I think for all of our readers um, and I know you this looks like the whole book is about that. How do you feel having actually done this? Um, do you feel like you want to continue to try to affect positive change in a world that is just so cynical and there's never a great option? Yeah, well, one thing I'm learning through just going out on the road and talking about what's in this book, uh, The Education of an Idealist, is actually how many uncynical people there are out there, how yeah. many people are really refusing to give up. They see the same stuff on the news you see, I see, that we live. They see our dysfunctional politics and instead of being tempted to change the channel or you know throw something at the TV, they're going out into the streets, they're canvassing for you know a Democratic presidential candidate or they're part of the climate marches uh, you mean, know, with young people. So Obama has been one of my heroes in yeah. my life and he was you know, anyone who actually gets involved in the world has to compromise deeply. Yeah. So how did you feel as the idealist on a team that from yeah. the outside seems like a team of idealists, but yeah. you were the idealist in that context. How do you feel? Do you feel more inspired to do more? Or do to you, totally. You I must mean, get discouraged, right? Well, I mean, you get disappointed, uh -huh. but, but if you go in thinking that you're going to waltz into the White House yeah. and get to reshape the world in your image yeah. <laughs> or in the image of, you know, how you think it should be shaped, uh, you know, you're going to have a rude awakening. But if you go in thinking it's going to be really hard, but that there's nothing more worth doing, that part of uh, the point of going in is also to learn how to do it better, learn how to how to move things within the government, learn how to get Congress to pay attention to things that you care about, you know, and even if it means uh, only a couple Republicans on board or no Republicans, you know, thinking about how to do things at a local level or with mayors. You know, my education is one not about going from being an idealist to a cynic, but one about right. the how and, and, and what are the lessons you learn. I was a war correspondent. I worked with um, uh, activists in the Save Darfur movement. I was a Senate aide. I was a campaign aide, although I had to leave the campaign because I made a terrible mistake. Then I was at the White House, then I was a diplomat. I mean, there's so much to learn. And what, what you find within the government at all levels, um, but also on the outside trying to influence the government is so many people of goodwill who just won't give up. And and they, because they know they can, it's not pragmatic. You know, you, you, there's a sort of caricature of an idealist yeah. where it's the pragmatist who's like the realist. What is pragmatic or realistic about al allowing climate change right. to destroy our coasts or to destroy a farmer's crops year in, year out, or to cause conflict and climate refugees, which then change our politics and, and help so, right-wing demagogues, you know, take yeah. power because of all the migrants. I mean, there's nothing pragmatic about that. So it's, it is about resilience, no question, but it's also about defining change in bite-sized portions so that you and I don't set our sights up here. That may be our lodestar. We, need, we all need a compass. But that if day to day we think that we're going to get that done and then we only get this done, then again, it's easy to walk away. Hmm. Obama's whole sort of saying was better is good. Um, do you feel like when you're presented with two awful options, like intervene and you don't know what will happen necessarily, there's always awful unforeseen consequences um, when you're trying to stop something awful? You know, you get involved in some quagmire, you know, yep. written a, a book about it. Um, or do nothing, which is also devastating. Do you feel, I mean, it's gotta be the toughest job on earth making those decisions, right? Well, if you're Obama or if you're the president, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my view is yes, there's a toolbox and okay. that there's a set of tools way short of using military force. It turns out you learn when you're you know, working at the White House and you're right there and you can get the, you, you can succeed in convincing the president to do a certain set of things. You then can see the limits of the toolbox. 
but you still might have prevented the refugee flow of 200,000 people or right. prevented the recruitment of child soldiers in a small right. community that otherwise wouldn't have gotten and every one of those 200,000 people is one person it's, a person. it's and heartbreaking and it, so moving yeah. exactly and, and so you get on the ground you actually go there it's not well, yeah, academic I, think you have. I mean yeah. part of again another form of, of making change or of at least doing something in a given day to try to be supportive to somebody is just by showing up and actually seeing the dignity and the worth of every individual by saying you're going to take the story back to the Security Council or back to the President of the United States, you know, it just might give that mother that extra hope to say, okay, I'm going to continue to educate my child at home because I, I, I don't have, there are no schools or because I can't afford to send my kid to school. So even just showing that America cares, which is something we don't do anymore, of course, under President Trump, uh, it's not much, but it's certainly not nothing. So, like, I'm a huge fan of the Iran uh, nuclear deal, and that was so difficult to make it happen yeah. under partisan pressure, right? Yeah, it was brutal. Took so much effort under so much pressure yeah. to make that Iran nuclear deal happen, only to see it all start to unravel from extremists on both right. sides with the next administration. So many people, friends of mine in Boulder say, declined to vote in the last election because they didn't have the idealistic candidate, right? I mean, a lot. I voted proudly for Hillary, but a lot of people didn't. Yes, for sure. Um, how do you see that kind of idealism? You're saying it must engage, it must vote, it must, you know, we must be active. Yeah. Is idealism sort of sitting back and nitpicking, or is it getting yeah. in the mud like Theodore Roosevelt's quote, right? <laughs> in the arena, yes. Yeah. Well, I'd say first on the Iran deal, yeah. I think it is really hard to get lots of political credit in our politics today for preventing war because you, you're there's no counterfactual right so right. you get this deal with its imperfections and it just lends itself to caricature of the kind that yeah. from the beginning really many republicans inflicted upon it um in this book what i try to do is because of the loss of self-confidence i feel that many americans are experiencing about American foreign policy and whether we can do good in the world. And or even, whether we even should try. Or whether we should even, well, if you, if you believe you can't, then you believe yeah. don't, which yeah. is a fair, a fair yeah. move, I think, um, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually. But I tell the story of the Iran deal, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, which we know is way too little, but nonetheless was getting China and India into the tent for the very first time. And it was very us, hard to make that happen. And it was, made, it was very hard to make that happen. But yeah. and, and, and to show, again, that the, none, none of these deals are perfect. Mm. Uh, I show our response to the Ebola epidemic, another mm. example where you don't get credit for the thing right. that you prevented, yeah. but it was so the right thing to do. 1.4 yeah. million people were estimated to be at risk of getting infected with Ebola. The politics were terrible, Democrats and Republicans alike, so afraid of letting health workers who'd been in West Africa come back to the United States. And yet President right. Obama braved the politics, did it, and saved you know probably you know up to a million lives. Uh, and we were a part of that, and it was about mobilizing a big global coalition, leveraging US leadership and our own commitments to get other countries to do more. And so on Iran, Paris, Ebola, there are a ton of examples like that, but it does require sort of, you know, not just seeking the glamour, not the chest thumping, doing so much behind the scenes work right. uh, that doesn't necessarily show up in the headlines, as you say, but that makes a profound difference. And we needed to do a better job, I think, and that's part of what I'm trying to do in the book, communicating the, the sense of meaning one has, but also the way that that benefits the American people to go and do that work abroad, about how it's good, it's, it's not only moral and decent, uh, but it's really smart. That we can do work abroad that isn't just throwing our might around, that we can actually And that help. it's not just airy-fairy, touchy-feely, like let's go do deals right. with everybody, it's about not having war. I mean, one segment of our society has been bearing the burden of these wars you know, since 9-11, and, and the Iran deal prevents that from happening. Ebola is about Ebola patients, or in fact, people who are affected with Ebola not getting on an airplane and coming to the United States. Um, you know, when you deal with the problem at its source, it's not coming here, and it's not right. harming Americans. So right. it's it's both, again, it's, it's in line with how we would, all right. of us who are mindful and yeah. want to live in brotherhood and solidarity, it's in line with that spirit, but it's also just brass tacks yeah. what's good for the American people. Even if you're the most selfish person on earth and you don't look out for your, your fellow man, you still have to invest in global cooperation. In if order you to want a strong border, yourself. you make sure the countries are Yeah, you whole invest at the source. Over there. Yeah. 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 Well, I hope you keep serving. Thank uh, you. Publicly, we need Thank people you so like much, you. Though. Thank you Thank so you. much. Lovely, Real, lovely Real pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Samantha Power and the new book.